can say with complete certainty, now that Gucci the Rock has finished, that it still is a very excellent show that I'll undoubtedly think about for a long time. Everything I said in my previous seasonal video still applies, but there was a different point I wanted to talk about. If you haven't seen the show, then spoilers, but I'll try my best to explain things if you are interested despite that. Bochi the Rock is a music anime featuring a band of characters cobbled together for camaraderie over a variety of reasons. Ryo wanted to play music her way. Nijika wanted a band popular enough for her and her sister's life house. Bochi wants to drop out of high school but pursue music seriously as a career in her own twisted way. And they're all different people with different motivations and they also take on different roles in the band. But this is still a band, so despite differences, there needs to be unity. We can physically hear that unity in the production of the tracks. These are great songs. But I think what really sells this feeling of the band, of their individuality, and how they express themselves, is what we can physically see. There has been research and exploration deriding ideas of movement in music, either in how we teach and link rhythm to physicality, or understand emotions in visual performance. One study had children encode emotions in music by miming them onto a stuffed bear. So if the sound was sad, the bear was to be moved to indicate that. The results showed effectiveness in this method. There was another case study of Annie Lennox and how her singing is often influenced by movement intrinsically linked to the emotions she wants to convey. In a way, this is similar to a suggestion in storytelling, the idea of show don't tell. When we show emotions or actions, it can be much more powerful than telling it. We can tell what a piece of music can be by listening. But there is something unique about showing that performance and seeing it be played that can enhance its effects. I always love watching random live performance videos whenever they pop up in my feed. Here are two from the Peggy's. The first is Centimeter. It's a love song. The lyrics are in Address to a Crush. From the beginning are smiles across their faces. It's an infectious beat with a snappy tune. The bassist is swaying back and forth. The drummer raises her hand just as she hits that cymbal. The lead singer is making gestures and faces. It's a very cheery mood, and they all play into it, showing the song's atmosphere. Immediately from that is Asciato Footprints, a song about departure. The movement is slower, their expressions stoic, and there are less additive gestures. This isn't supposed to be the kind of fun song where the lead singer can be making faces and motioning with a free hand. The tone and atmosphere doesn't call for it, and so watching them, the tension of the song is clear. They show the song's atmosphere and emotions while they play. One of my favorite parts is the solos. In the first song, she steps outwards, almost towards the drummer, and they have this very cute interaction as they jam out. In the second, this interaction isn't really there. She stays where she is. She shows, through her actions, the differing emotions. If the song has the right atmosphere, no one will bat an eye at how frenetic she is. But if the song is more somber, that same action would be strange. Music is a form of storytelling and performers play into that story through their physicality. But let's get to the real star of the show, Bochi the Rock. During the spontaneous live session Bochi is corralled into, she's able to slightly improve her anxieties, as it's this moment that eases her into public performances. When the song starts, Bochi plays with her eyes closed. <sighs> Seeing the musicians not looking at you gives a sense of distance. It's alienating, almost hostile, as if the musician isn't there to play for you. Those paying attention can really feel a shift in the atmosphere. 
Which is what happens. There's even stiffness to her playing. She isn't really moving, but is holding firm to her fears. But when Bochi starts to gain confidence and opens her eye, her expressions are more inviting. She isn't as scared. And her playing is involved. Her body movements sway and she's now no longer stationary and we get more active strumming. It doesn't look like she's simply frozen from fear on stage. She's there to play. And she shows it through physically getting into the music. The physicality of opening her eye, along with how her body gets into the groove, shows the story of what went on in her mind. Bochi, throughout that session, gradually realizes the stakes of her playing and gains confidence and it's expressed in this contrast of physicality. We can also see how she expresses herself during their audition. A big part of the show is how Kesoku Band has given Bochi opportunities and how she wants to cherish them. And as the song starts, Bochi remains pretty still. She's figuring out what she wants. The lack of movement in her playing displays a contemplative nature, and it being the start of the song, with the lyrics asking various questions, is fitting. Once the chorus starts, and Bochi has figured out what she wants to do, she puts her foot down. The expressive and rhythmic movement we see from the others now instilled into Bochi. She's showing them with her performance what she wants, and her intentions are clear enough to catch attention. It's as if Bochi has raised her voice, telling everyone that this is where she wants to be and that this is what she wants to do. And the lyrics also follow this. They are Bochi's lyrics, so this idea of screaming out and reaching out is appropriate and prominently emphasized in her burst of movement. Her guitar wrapping up just at the height of her realization is one part in how her emotions have come across. But it's also seeing Bochi physically asserting her presence, taking that metaphorical and literal step forward that accentuates her place with them. As she becomes sure of her goals and motivations, her rhythmic body sways and playing better matches the rest of the band members. She has found her place here, and so she joins them in this performance, giving it her all. Of course, this example included more than just Bochi. Since this attention to detail and expressive physical movements aren't exclusive to Bochi. There is a lot of intricacies that can be found when it's an ensemble and how their movements can be communicative to the audience and themselves. There has been research into exactly this, with things like positioning and spatial awareness looked at in context with social environment. One study was with a piano duel, and during play, there was an increased need for using physical movement to communicate. As they played, it was noted that it was as if they began to move as one, rather than two individuals, once they were within the same zone. To see a group of musicians moving out of sync would cause a lot of distortion, even if the sound may not be so, but in witnessing that performance. It's kind of like poor lip syncing. It just looks odd and creates an uncanny valley. To become as one and to see everyone locked in would create cohesion and amplify the performance. There were further studies with bands to look at the dynamics in place and how movement can be tied to their personalities. And at the end of the day, there's a lot to be found in any performance, especially one that involves multiple artists on stage. And it's truly an undertaking to have it all meld together and even more to have it be animated and relay all of these intricacies. As Kesuku Band settles in for their first performance, we get two different scenes. Their first song doesn't go so well. They get badmouthed before they play and their nerves show. Audibly, the music is off. The instruments are dragging and Kita's voice isn't the best. Visually, you can see things are off. Nijika frowns. She looks like she doesn't want to be there. Bochi is barely moving, relaying how awful she feels just standing on stage. 
There are many shots of her playing, and it looks like she's just going through the motions. We get this two-way shot of Kita and Ryo, which is a mirror of episode 5, except they're more firmly in place. The frenetic movement from Ryo isn't there, and the confidence from Kita is missing. But when Bochi takes things into her own hands, all of the movement bursts into action. Bochi's playing is expressive. Ryo enters her groove and Nijika follows. She's now looking up from her drumming, and there's more energy to her movements. We can also see Bochi playing with both her eyes wide open, instead of just the one. As if to yell towards those listening that she won't let their band end, she gives everything she can in her playing. Even the way she lurches forward during specific guitar sections is able to show the effort she's putting into her playing. She's putting all of her body and spirit into her sound, not taking a relaxed approach or being laid back enough to just stand there. But she's really putting her back into this. And it isn't just in her sound that it comes out, but in physically seeing her exert herself. Bochi's guitar solo with the rush of movement along with her frenetic and determined playing is key in letting the rest of the band recover and expressing what Kesoku band is. They're able to show the version of themselves rocking out in unison, even if they can still use some work. And we get to see all of that work in the final episode. With their continued practice and some forceful pushing to sign them up for the cultural festival, they find themselves on another stage. From the first song, every band member is playing with a great deal of expressive movements. Kita kickstarts the energy with her clapping to situate the cheery mood of the song. Bochi is swaying to the beats accordingly. Ryo is jolting forward as she plays and even turns back towards Nijika to get the right timing. There's confidence in these motions and the close-up shots go further in adding to their individual playing. They're smiling, comfortable, and rocking. There isn't a hint of worry as they perform both audibly and visually. One of the key moments for me is how Kita is punctuating this note in particular. There's a pitch in her voice, as it's a deep note underlying her regular tone. That sway from left to right lets you feel that note as she's physically showing you the arc of the sound. It's similar to a singer raising their hand when increasing volume or hitting a high note. It's important and purposeful enough that you see it here in the background again. This momentum is carried to their second song, starting with the whole band turning around so they can all be together. There's this beat of Bochi being lost since she's concerned about her guitar, but when she does catch on, she turns with them. They're not just playing by themselves, but as a group, and they can only really start once they're together. Even when things may go wrong, like Bochi's broken string, Kita is ready because of her spatial and physical awareness. Bochi's physical actions start slowing down, she isn't moving to the beat, she's apprehensively stepping back and forth, and her body only moves slightly as if she was holding something back, rather than the full body sways where her movements were more energetic. These movements express worry, enough to affect that part of the song. There's tension now, and it feels uncomfortable watching her play, but Kita doesn't waver or show that same worry with her movements. She decides to go even harder with her performance, showing everyone that things are alright. That burst of lively energy is key in selling that moment and capturing Kita's message. She's showing with all she can that this will not be a roadblock. There's a particular moment where we even get her slouching forward, putting her back into her movements and showing, just like how Bochi did, the hard work she's gone through and the spirit and energy of her playing. Bochi catches on to seeing the utmost confidence of Kita and her own worries disappear. She doesn't look around and see her band panicking, but she sees them trying even harder. Now things feel back in place, but she's back to how she was when she was more confident, since she has now regained her groove. Without words, we're shown how she's right back in her zone. Bo 
Orchi to Rock is a show about a lot of things, and for me, it's clear just how involved every layer of the show is in communicating and representing its themes and characters. It's such a well-crafted show, and its musical performances are a big part of all of that. Having their physical movements be so purposeful and feel so realistic go a long way in the immersion, storytelling, and characterization of those musical scenes. Music is a lot of things. And for me, I will always appreciate when music is performed with both the audio and visual aspects in mind. And we can definitely see that in Boshi's Rock. And that was the end of the video. Usually I have a camera shot set up for these outros, but this time around I'm uh, mimicking Bochi the Rock and having a rolling credit screen. This was a follow-up in a spiritual successor type of way to my Healer Girl video, where I talked about uh, movement in music and how physicality really helps express the emotions and characterization and stories in Healer Girl. If you're still interested in this topic, I highly recommend checking that video out. I even made it a point to use different research because some of the points and ideas kind of carried over and I didn't want to just rehash the ideas in that video. But otherwise, thank you for watching once again and I'll see you in the next one.